Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at deep compositing because a lot of people have asked for it. So here it is. I've got a little scene set up and what we're going to be doing is rendering two passes. Uh, we're going to have a pass with the floor the uh, and the pillars um, all together and then another pass with just the spheres. And uh, we're going to have to set up those render passes so just in case you don't know how to do it. Uh, we'll do that now. So let's go to the render passes and click add and uh, this one can be called pillars and then we will right click on that and create a collection and this can just be called pillars also. Alright so we will add in all the pillars and the plane. Oh and the light, don't forget to add the light in. And then we'll create a new one, a new render layer, and we'll call this Spheres. And create a new collection, calling it Spheres. And we will add the Sphere 1 and Sphere 2. Let's move those. And you'll have to add the light to this pass as well, obviously, because otherwise you won't be able to see it. Now, uh, let's have a look at those passes and we'll see if we can figure out what won't work here. Oh and uh, just for your reference this is what the render looks like just as a beauty render and if we just look at the spheres and run that IPR you'll see that um, we've got both of our spheres but a couple of things are missing. This one here if we look at the previous render is reflective enough that it should be seeing all the background. Also it appears that I haven't smooth subdivided it so I'll do that as well um, on both of those. So what we need to do is create some geometry that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to be um, sort of like a stand-in. It's going to block light um, but it's not going to be visible on the layer. So we want to have all those pillars on this layer but only to cast uh, shadows and reflection. So I'm just going to group all this. Actually, I'm going to go back to my uh, main scene before I start doing anything. Otherwise, it's going to add a whole bunch of stuff in. So I'm going to group that. It's going to call this geos, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And this is going to be called standins. And just so it's easy to spot, I'm going to put underscore si for all those. Um, and um, that's going to mess up your render layers, so we'll, we'll redo those. So I'll just remove everything from that. Okay. Now the stand-ins, they need a couple of things happening with them. They need to be able to uh, receive shadow, cast shadow, but not be visible in primary visibility. So what you want to do is go select your object in the attribute editor, go to the shape um, tab. And scroll down to render stats. So we want to take out primary visibility because this is a stand-in. Um, smooth shading if you require it. Um, this one doesn't. It doesn't really matter if you've got smooth shading in uh, just at, by clicking through as well. Um, but I'll leave that on. It doesn't really matter. Um, visible in refle reflections and visible in refractions is fine because we want this pillar to be visible in the reflection of this sphere. Um, so before I get carried away I'm just going to hide the actual geometry. We'll go into the stand-ins and because we have to do this for five of them let's just select all of them. Go to Windows, uh, General Editors and Attribute Spreadsheet and we want to make it so the primary visibility is off on all of them. So if you select all of them and hit zero it's going to change all of them to off. Okay now let's set those render layers up again. So we'll just go to the pillars, that's going to be the pillars and the ground. So did I create a stand-in for that ground? I also need to create a stand-in for the ground. So I'll just quickly do that now, same settings as well. Okay, so the pillars needs to be the all the pillars, actually hide the stand-ins, bring back the geos, Select those and select the plane and we'll add those in. Now these need to cast shadow 
uh, onto our spheres. So we're going to actually have to put those sphere stand-ins in to this layer as well. So um, when it renders, it's actually going to put a shadow over the top of the other layer. You'll see what I mean when we uh, render it up. So, okay, now we'll go to the spheres and we want to have the ground stand in so these can cast shadows on the ground in its own layer. Um, and we want to have the spheres and we want to have the light, which we need, still need to add into the other one. Let's do that now. And we'll just do a quick IPA to check that we've not missed anything because this can be a little bit confusing. Just click the I button, you'll see everything that's visible on that layer. And let's make sure we unhide the stand-ins. Oh yes, and on the spheres we're going to need those um, cylinder stand-ins as well. Alright, so it's hard to tell the difference between the two because they should look almost identical. But if we go to the IPR, so for the spheres, you'll see now that compared to this one, which aside from the smooth subdivision, um, now we have the reflection of the other of the pillars and they're receiving um, shadow as well from those stand-ins. And we can check the other render layer by doing by clicking the eye thing uh, eye button on the pillars render layer. And you can see that the pillars are all there, and you're also getting the cast reflect uh, the cast shadow from the um, stand-ins as well, which is what we want. All right, so what we can do now is go up to our render settings in Render Man. We'll go to AOVs, select your beauty layer, and go down to our display type and change that to Deep EXR. And you can do this on LPEs and things like that as well. Uh, sorry, on um, your other passes. Um, but I'm going to have to do a separate tutorial for your other AOVs uh, for shadow maps and things. So there are s slightly different ways to do this with shadow maps as well um, as a shadow map pass, which makes things slightly less confusing than this way. Uh, but just for a basic uh, geometry composition, this is kind of st straightforward enough that if you don't have too much going on in your scene, this should be quite easy to do. All right, so um, with that done, I'll just do a quick save and we'll do a batch render. Oop, and um, in future, I should have uh, deselected the scene to be rendering, but do make sure that the render uh, clipboard is uh, enabled for both of the render layers that you want. Okay, in Nuke, we're going to bring in our render layers. If you're just doing this in Nuke and you want to do a read, you need to make sure that you don't just do a standard read. You need to hit tab and do a deep read, like so. Otherwise, it's just going to read it as a regular uh, uh, EXR. All right, so that is our beauty. That is our pillars and that is our spheres. So to combine these, we just need to hit uh, tab and type in deep merge. And then voila. So if you compare the two, I'll just put um, uh, the deep merge on uh, one. So if I flick between the two, absolutely no different. But as you can see, those are not being occluded by anything in the foreground and they're still picking up the reflection and everything else. So that is quite good. Now something to note with your deep uh, nodes to do any editing to them, um, you need to make sure that, for example, if you wanted to do a, a reformat or color correct. Okay, well, that's probably not gonna work very well on that one. Let's put it on the other. All right. So now we can do a color correction on this. So for example, change the saturation, um, you know, change the highlights, etc. Um, however, obviously, if you do more AOVs, you're gonna make it's gonna make it a little bit simpler to have more control. There are situations where obviously deep uh, compositing isn't gonna be the answer for what you want to do. You might want to just use a uh, matte ID passes for masking, which is completely doable as well. Certain situations where, like this is pretty straightforward, obviously you just want to use matte IDs for this and it'll be totally fine. But 
Um, when you've got objects in things like uh, long grass or in smoke or something like that and you want to put them uh, in it so they're being occluded by something in the foreground but also occluding something in the background that's sort of part of the same sort of geometry like a big patch of grass or a piece of you know a bit of smoke would be then this is quite useful um, it does save a lot of time with rotoscoping and all that sort of thing as well um, also if you did want to do some further editing down there after this deep merge node you can just go deep to image and then that will make it so you can do um, you know a grade or something like that and that's just going to affect everything simple as that so hopefully this tutorial has been easy enough to follow I know it's sort of a little bit confusing to get started with but um try a basic scene like that and try and follow along like what like what I did um, with the reflections that I put in there it sort of added a little bit of difficulty but um, hopefully that um, the way that you can sort of hide and use uh, standard geometry that's not visible in the render layer hopefully that helps you guys solve a couple of problems that you might run into if you're doing deep compositing and um, as an example of a slightly more complex scene with uh, deep compositing you can see that I've got my robot here and I've got my grass here and I've merged those together and then using the Z data going down through the chain I've actually created a ZD focus as well as um, using a mask to actually do some further grading. This this mask is actually on the beauty pass uh, rather than on a deep uh, pass. Uh, I don't believe that matte IDs work as render passes in deep with deep data. I could be wrong though. Let me know in the comments if you um, if you know it to be the opposite. If you like the tutorial though, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a new tutorial every week for all sorts of things just like Render Man. Uh, if you want to follow my work, check out the Instagram page, link in the description. You can also follow this channel on Facebook, link in the description for that as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.